Hey, what's up? This is Tim with Studio4Media.com, and thanks again for tuning in to another tutorial inside of Maya. We're going to be taking a look at creating uh, some crop circles inside of a wheat field today uh, using paint effects. It's going to be a really cool technique and fun tutorial. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, this is our website right here, Studio4Media.com. If you enjoy these tutorials, these free tutorials, please consider uh, supporting us through this website so we can continue to bring you awesome tutorials. Also, we have all our free tutorials on here and all of our product files, so just go to free tutorials right there. Um, the product files for this will be available on our blog for this tutorial. Uh, it's not up there yet because I haven't posted it, but it will be available there. And then also take a look at the tutorials we have available for our members up here. And uh, there's a whole bunch of tutorials and models and everything that uh, we show you a preview of so you can get an idea of what you'll be getting if you subscribe. Um, if you subscribe, you only have to pay 50 bucks for the entire year. And that gets you access to all of our tutorials, all of our models, and we add new content every single month. Uh, and it's a uh, really professional training um, or you could just go ahead and go with the thirty dollar and that gets you t uh, access to all of our tutorials and product files so it's a really good deal uh, please consider supporting us through that if you enjoy these tutorials okay let's go ahead and get started so this is uh, our crop circles uh, product file if you download the product files it's under crop circles start uh, if you don't want to download it it's fine I'll just show you what I have set up right now all I have is a bunch of curves um, and they're lined out in this manner. So these are just uh, curves here. And you can create your own crop circles or you can create your own whatever you want uh, and use the technique. It's going to be uh, really cool. So, alright, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, select our crop circles number one in the outliner and shift select down to number 11. Okay, so we have all of them selected. And then make sure we're in our rendering tab. Go to our paint effects here. Go down to curve utilities. We're going to attach brush to curves. So we just attached the default brush to our curves, um, which is going to be fine for what we're using it for. And now if we back up to the very front of our outliner, you're going to see here that we have all these individual strokes. So we're going to want to go ahead and select all those. So stroke number one, shift select 11. Hit control G on the keyboard, command G if you're on Mac. And we'll rename this uh, strokes. So we have all our strokes under here, and they're all grouped up now. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, select our strokes now. Shift select them, and take a look in our channel box here at some of the options we have. Um, let's go down to our max clip, and we're going to set this to a value of zero. And you can notice now that these disappear. Uh, and make sure we're on frame one right here. And we'll right click on our max clip and go to key selected. So we keyed it at a value of zero, so there's no paint effect showing right now. Then we'll go all the way to the end at 120. And if you're not set to 120, you can do it right here. Just set your frames to 120. And we'll turn up our max clip to one, and now that's completely on. And we'll key the selected again, right click, say key selected, and now you'll see that this pretty much animates on. So our curves are now animating on the, that paint effect. Now you're going to notice here this is a little bit choppy, just kind of, you know, goes across in a choppy manner, and that's we want it to be a little bit smoother than that. So if we select our strokes again uh, in the channel box, scroll down to our sample density, we can turn that up to, say, a value of 10, and let's see what that looks like. So that already is way better. You can turn that up a little bit more if you want. Uh, what that's doing is actually increasing the uh, uh, stroke uh, itself, the topology. So uh, the more you increase it, the higher resolution it is. Um, so just be careful. You don't want to go overboard. But uh, that makes it a lot smoother. And that, that looks good for me. All right. So now we've basically got our, our crop circle animating. Looks good. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at our size. So I think that's, I want this to be a little bit bigger. They're kind of thin right now. So if I select, let me select all my strokes and go to paint effects. I'm going to say share one brush. So now if I make a change to just one of these strokes, it's going to change all of them. We'll go in here to our attribute editor and go to brush 12. That's going to be our settings. And we'll go to our brush profile and turn our width up to say a value of point two no that's a little bit too big let's do point one point one <laughs> yeah that's a little bit better you can maybe point one three a little bit thicker 
So this looks uh, pretty good if we play this back. Got a pretty thick lines going through here. I like it. Now one thing you notice is that uh, these are all kind of going in unison. Like these are at the exact same point in time. These are at the exact same point in time. So if you want to change that up, all we have to do really is just take our curves and let's just like rotate this one a little bit to like there. This one here. I guess I could have done this before uh, I gave you guys the product file, but now you'll know if you're making your own. And we'll just kind of randomize where this is at. So now when we play this back, they all kind of start in a different area and it looks a lot better. So, a little tip for you there. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's go over some render settings here because we're going to render this out and then we're going to import the uh, video file back into Maya under a different scene. So, uh, right now, let's go ahead and make sure that we have our uh, Maya software selected. And if you're using this uh, this product file, the crop circle start product file, most of this will probably already be done for you, but I'm going to go over it just so you know while we're doing it. So, go under your Maya software tab and make sure your quality is set to production quality. We'll just use the default there. And make sure you scroll down to paint effects and this oversample needs to be turned on. I think the default is off, so make sure that's turned on. And then the rest of it will just use the default. Go back to common here and we'll change our image format. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you want name dot uh, number sign dot extension ext. Frame padding at 1 is fine. Make sure your start frame is 1 and your end frame is 120 because we go to 120 there. Uh, frame one, yeah, by frame, that's fine. Uh, you can render from the top view or from the perspective view as long as your perspective view is on the top. Okay. Um, and then we'll use a, the default uh, 1K square, which is good. And that looks fine. Now, one more thing we want to make sure of is that we have our, uh, right now, if we render this out, it's just black. We can't see the actual strokes because the strokes are black. And when we import this back in, Maya is going to use the information, and we want it to make sure it's uh, white on black, so it's really easy for Maya to see where these strokes are at. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, if we're going to render up from our perspective view, make sure we're on the top as much as we can be. Okay, and then we'll also open up our channel box, select our perspective camera, uh, and go down here to environment. Okay, we'll scroll down to environment in our attribute editor. The background color right now is set to black. We'll change that to white. And now, if we uh, render this out, there we go. We have our white on black, just the way Maya likes it. And uh, this is looking really good. One thing I don't like as I'm just looking at this, I don't like how this intersects right there. So I'm going to take this curve and just move it down. And let's go ahead and make sure we're moving the actual curve, not the stroke. Move it down just so it kind of intersects those two. And let's see if I like that a little bit better. Render this out and do a test render to make sure it looks good. Everything's fitting in frame. And I like that a lot better. So kind of intersecting both of those circles and then up here as well. So there we go. This part is pretty much done. I'm going to go ahead and batch render this out. So just go under Render. Batch render. It might take a little bit of time, so I'm going to do this, pause the video, come back, and we'll get started with the next set. Okay, so we have our scene rendered out here, and this is going to be available uh, in the product file, so make sure you download that. Um, we have all the way from scene 1 to frame 120, and it's just an IFF, which is a file type that Maya reads. So that's all done. Go ahead and open up uh, the wheat field start in your project files, and uh, if you don't have the product files, if you didn't download it, all I have is a plane right here. It's just a uh, polyplane, okay, with a little bit of displacement on it to make it look kind of like a like a field, okay? So, uh, with this opened up, we're going to go ahead and select our field and we're going to go under the fur tab and we're just going to use a preset here. We're just going to use a grass preset. Just click on that and it'll apply it there. Um, so in our attribute editor under grass1, our grass1 node, uh, Let's scroll down here and make some changes. So let's go ahead and start with the density. Let's crank this up quite a bit to a value of 350,000. So 350 and then three more zeros after that. I'll change our global scale to a value of 2. 
and let's start changing our colors here. Our base color will make a dark brown, and our tip color will make a little bit of a lighter, uh, probably even lighter than this, kind of like a light yellow. Okay. So as our base color is at the bottom, it's going to be dark brown. At the tip, it's going to be that wheat color. All right, and then let's also change our length to a value of three and our baldness to a value of 0.8, okay? And that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, render all this under the mental ray tab, so you can switch that to mental ray. And I have my image size set to 640 by 480. We're gonna need to remember that later. So, uh, let me make sure something is, okay. So, we're good to go. Um, this looks pretty good. If I render this out right now, it will take a little bit of time to render because any time you deal with fur or hair or any of that stuff, it takes time to render. But if you rendered it out right now, you could get something similar to this. Okay? So you got that dark brown. It just looks like some some fur or some grass. Uh, but it's definitely a good place to start. So we'll start here. And now we need to attach our textured uh, sequence to this uh, wheat field. So how we do that is, let's go ahead and... Uh, we can have our fur feedback node now. So you can see we have this. And if we select grass one under our fur feedback node, uh, we can make changes to it this way. So um, let's go ahead and scroll down to our length attribute. Okay? I'm going to right click on that and say create new texture. And from there, we have a whole bunch of options, but we want to select it file, but we want to right click file. I want to create texture, okay? And now we have an option of opening up an image name. We'll select open, and all you got to do is find those image sequences um, of the crop circles, and you want to select the last frame. So 120 is the last frame that we have. So we'll select that, hit OK, um, and we want to make sure we scroll down and use or check this box off. Alpha is luminance. So now we're good to go. This is all set up how we want it, okay? But you'll notice if we render this back out, it actually won't have our uh, crop circles in our wheat field because it hasn't been applied yet. So we have this done, but we, there's another step we have to do. We have to go back to our uh, grass one node, okay? And we have to bake this out. So under our bake attributes, the default is all. Just go ahead and set that to length. And then we want to change our map width and height to the same value as our uh, image size here. So we want to have 640 by 480. And let's make sure that's actually changing it. 640 by 480. And that looks good. Now let's go ahead and bake this out. Now that we've baked it out, uh, if we render this out, we're going to notice that we have a uh, change here. But you also noticed um, that the length of this wheat field has actually gone down overall. Um, and that's because it's using our image over the entirety of the plane and the whole length has gone down. So we need to compensate for that. And we can compensate for that by scrolling down and under the details tab you'll see a value called length or another tab called length and an option called map multiplier. This is going to just multiply everything that's on our map and we'll set that up to a value of 3. And there you see our length has come back now, and it's looking like it was before we applied our texture. So this is going great, looking good. Now if we render this out right now, uh, and I'll just render it out a little bit so you can see. Um, it does take some time to render, but at least you'll see we have now some indentations in our wheat field. You can see there's a line right there. You can see the beginning of a circle right there. So we definitely have our, our indentation in the wheat field, which is exactly what we want. Um, so now our texture is working properly with the grass file node and everything looks good. But the next step we need to do is have our animation um, be applied to this wheat field. So that way it's not just a static uh, crop circle, it actually animates on. Okay. So uh, this is looking good. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our uh, file node, so file one node. Scroll down here. And we want to check this box, Use Image Sequence. Select this, and now you can see our sample is white, because the very first frame is white, and we're using frame number one. If we scroll through, um, you can see it changes, and that's our animation now. So, very good. 
Uh, but you notice that nothing happens on our wheat field. If I was to render it out here on frame one, which would be nothing, I will get uh, an indentation there. And I'll just render this out enough to show you that there is, see that indentation right there. So um, what we need to do is we need to rebake this out, okay? Because uh, we made some changes. So let's go back up to our bake attribute. And we just need to rebake this out. So length, that looks good. And as we bake this, you're going to notice that our timers is a... Uh, changing now it's counting up and it's just going through our animation and applying it to our grass node now you're not going to notice anything right away uh, but here in a second as we scrub through you'll you'll see a little bit of indentations in the grass and then we're going to do a test render to make sure that everything's working properly <coughs> all right so as this is finishing up we'll scrub through here and see if it's working So you can see right now, we have uh, no indentations in our grass. As we scroll through, some of them start to disappear. Now, obviously, it's impossible to tell in our just our viewport what the indentations are. But let's go to like frame, I don't know, 53 or somewhere in the middle here and re-render this back out. And since this is in the middle of the animation, we should see uh, just about half of the things, half of the circles made, <coughs> excuse me, half of the lines drawn, all that stuff. So... We can see here, okay, so yeah, we have our circles starting here, but they're not all the way finished. And we have our lines starting over here, but not all the way done. So this is looking great. You can notice that this is right in the middle of our animation. So this is looking really good. And that means that it's pretty much done. As if we were to batter into this back out, it would basically just have our indentations going in our crop circle, or in our wheat field, and it look really good. Um, but you'll notice here, and this actually isn't that good of a view, I maybe want to get more of a top view like this to really see the how uh, deep those indentations go. So let's let's see if that makes a difference and we can render it out. Um, also, oh wait, we got to uh, make sure we're at the end frame if you want to see the actual <laughs> crop circles in your wheat field. Uh, also, something we can do uh, in our red render settings, because if you notice right now, um, uh, it's a little bit uh, flat, kind of matte. It doesn't look very good. It's kind of the colors are kind of off, uh, but we can change that here in a second. So this is looking really good. I like this this camera angle because you can see the indentations more, uh, but you still have those, you know, grass overlaying uh, the indentation, so it looks pretty realistic. Yeah, I like this angle a lot. I'm gonna save this image, let this render out all the way. Um, but as you notice, it's just kind of kind of flat and matte, maybe a little bit too bright, uh, too overexposed um, because of our tip color here. Uh, but what we can do to change this uh, to make it look a lot more realistic is we'll just go ahead and turn on ray tracing in our render settings, and that will allow it to have those shadows and look a lot more realistic. So I'm going to let this finish rendering out and then save it and then show you the difference between this and a ray trace. So here's this one. And let's just go ahead and go into our render options and under quality, turn ray tracing on. Now this is going to render a lot slower because we have shadows uh, now turned on. Uh, but you're going to notice a difference right away as it begins to render. And I'm not going to let it render out all the way because it will take a long time. But you're going to notice as it starts that the, the grass is a lot darker, even here. Uh, you got a lot more contrast and it looks a lot better. So I would recommend uh, rendering once you're happy with the camera angle and everything. Maybe you'll do like a camera animation, which would be really cool. Just kind of slow pan up uh, would be really awesome. But uh, once you're happy with all that and you're finished with the test renders, then I would turn on uh, the ray tracing and render it out that way because uh, that way you could you could uh, make sure you have it how you want it first without taking up too much render time. So yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something. This is a really fun technique. You could do a lot of things with it. You could make all different types of designs, and you could change the colors around to make it look like it actually is you know, in grass or uh, whatever else. Um, really cool. You could even apply some uh, you know, different effects to the actual wheat field. You can apply some, some wind um, to make it just you know, blow in the wind, make it look really even more realistic. So, so many different options you have with this, this type of effect, but hopefully you guys uh, learned something. And 
really enjoyed this tutorial. So thanks a lot. Be sure to go ahead and t check out uh, studio4media.com and look at all the other tutorials we have available there. Uh, uh, if you like this tutorial and you enjoy uh, these teachings, then uh, uh, please uh, consider uh, supporting us that way. So thanks a lot, guys. We will see you on the next one.